Hi, this is Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. Thanks for joining me for this week's episode of the Sonic Scoop podcast. And today I'm going to be giving you my three key takeaways from a very talented producer, engineer, mixer named Maria Elisa Ayerbe. Maria Elisa Ayerbe, she has been nominated for multiple Grammy and Latin Grammys. She's worked with a whole range of huge artists, some of the biggest Latin American artists you probably know, Ricky Martin, uh, J-Lo, Mark Antony, a bunch of American artists too, uh, Mary J. Blige, and Italian artist Laura Puccini, who is enormous over there. But she has some great insights, I think, to share in the masterclass she just did for MixCon. You can check it out in the Sonic Scoop YouTube channel. That's uh, youtube.com slash Sonic Scoop video. And I'm going to give you three of what I think are the biggest key takeaways. The first one is a pretty simple one, and that is that she works in a pretty simple environment. It was, I was really blown away to see her working on such a high level of project, such a high caliber of artists, and doing such a high quality of work in a looks like a home recording studio that pretty much anyone could relate to. She has good monitoring set up that she can trust. In this case, there are some Cali audio monitors. They sponsor the presentation and she was using some of those Cali innate three-way monitors that I've done a video about in the past. So she has some monitors she could trust, some digital tools she could trust and knew how to use, and that's it. And the rest comes down to technique. And yeah, there's some acoustic treatment on the wall, a little less than I have here, but she's got some uh, coverage in corners and in key places. So with the basics that we keep on talking about here, just decent basic room that anyone could be in, decent basic acoustic treatment, some good monitors you can trust, and tools and the know-how, that's it. That's what it takes in this day and age to work on really high-level work. She's worked on records that have sold you know, millions upon millions of copies with, with artists that have sold millions upon millions of copies. So uh, that is some, some stuff there. <laughs> You've definitely got to take away from this. The other thing that I want to say is her approach to where she starts the mix. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. But first, I give a big shout out to this week's sponsors on the Sonic Scoop podcast. First, Sound Toys, making some of my favorite plugins in the known universe. Check out anything they make for free at soundtoys.com, where you can get a 30 day trial. Some of the best creative mixing effects out there. You see them in practically every MixCon presentation that's done because practically everyone working at a high level uses them. They make fun, creative stuff. Definitely check them out. Also, big thanks to Steinberg sponsoring the podcast this month. They are makers of a whole bunch of great DAWs, including WaveLab, geared towards mastering, Cubase, and Nuendo, as well as things like Dorico, their music notation software, and a whole range of great hardware interfaces. Check them out, steinberg.net. All right, let's uh, keep on going into this. Her starting place for mixing, working in genres that you'd expect to be driven by kick drum, snare drum, bass, that kind of thing. The particular track she opens up in MixCon is a reggaeton track, but she starts with the vocal. She's not the first or last MixCon uh, attendee to do this. Kevin Killen at the very first MixCon, when was that? 2014, 2015, something like that. He was a kind of guy who starts with the vocal. He's worked with a tremendous number of artists, U2 and uh, a whole range of others, Peter Gabriel and stuff like that. But Maria Elisa takes the same approach on this reggaeton track. It's driven by a kick drum, driven by a snare, you'd say, but she starts in on the vocal. And she really gets the vocal vibe, the vocal feel, the vocal flavor, the arc of the vocal happening before she starts diving in too deep, focusing on the rhythm track. So there's that initial pass of kind of getting basic level set, and then it's kind of setting the mood with the featured pop vocal. And this is not necessarily a bad way to start, particularly in pop music, where the vocal vibe is kind of what gives things their sonic signature to a degree. And the vocal is like the arc of things that people are really following through the song, and it sets the tone and it sets the mood. And in a lot of pop productions, it can make a lot of sense to focus in on your vocal before you go spending an hour on your kick drum or an hour on your snare drum or whatever it is. So definitely something to think about there. The third big takeaway I get from Maria Elisa is how she really likes to apply a lot of processing in series, particularly dynamic range processing, with each plugin or tool just doing a little bit of the work. You know, one compressor shaving off a little bit, another compressor shaving off a little bit. These compressors in series might have different attack and release times. 
There was actually one track she brought up. It was interesting. She put Renaissance Axe on it, which is a waves compressor that's been around for ages. And in one of the instances of it, she is increasing the attack to a degree with one setting. And another instance of it, she's going back and reducing the amount of attack. Why would you do that? Well, I talk about this a bunch in uh, videos and articles I've done on serial compression, this idea of stacking particularly attack times. Sometimes you have a track where the transients are poking out a little bit too much, a little too uneven, so you want to smooth out the transients. But then you might want to have an additional compressor that takes that smoothed out transient and brings its level up overall. So you're doing two things. One, potentially fast compressor to make your transients just a little tighter and more consistent and more even. And then another one that makes sure that you're not dulling things out too much by reducing your transients too much. So you take that smoothed out transient and bring up that smoothed out even transient overall. And that's the basic idea behind serial compression. That's one of the things that goes on in that kind of serial processing that she's doing. And that's something to think about just in general. There's a lot of compressors, the limiters and other tools that sound great in moderation, but there's a lot of genres that ask for a little more than moderation. Reggaeton is one of them. And sometimes you can get the best of both worlds by not putting all of your processing onto any one track. Well, those are some of my key takeaways, three of them that I'll give you. There's so many more that you could get from Maria Elisa by checking out the full masterclass. It's about an hour and a half long, so definitely check it out over on the Sonic Scoop YouTube channel. There's so many more insights beyond that. Definitely check it out. And if you want to get a workshop that ties together all the common threads from like all of the great mixers who have ever been at MixCon, check out the five habits of truly great mixers. You can get that at sonicscoop.com slash mixhabits. That's sonicscoop.com slash mixhabits. If you want to dive a little deeper into mastering, you can check out my full-length workshop for totally for free on mastering called Mastering 101. Get that sonicscoop.com slash mastering 101. Sonicscoop.com slash mastering 101. Either or both of those are going to treat you right. All right. Big thanks to Steinberg for sponsoring this episode of the podcast, makers of Cubase, Nuendo, Doracle, and a great line of audio interfaces. Also, big thanks to Sound Toys, making some of my favorite plugins in the known universe. Thanks to Cali Audio for sponsoring the masterclass from Maria Elisa. If you haven't checked it out, hope to see you over on the YouTube channel and hope to see you for more MixCon. Ooh, last PSA. One more. Can I stack one more in? We're giving away thousands of dollars worth of free gear over at the Sonic Scoop website. Just go to sonicscoop.com slash mixcon giveaway. That's sonicscoop.com slash mixcon giveaway where there are three chances to win thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of gear from all of our lovely MixCon sponsors. Thank you for being a lovely listener of the podcast. Remember to smash the like button if you're on the YouTube version. Hit like and subscribe, the notifications bell, all that stuff. And if you're on the audio-only version, please consider giving us a five-star rating and review. It really does help spread the word. Thank you for hanging out with me. This has been Justin Cletty of Sonic Scoop. See you next time.